Every episode of No Offsides Podcast is brought to you by Champion Hockey. Be a champion. Hey. All right. Well, welcome back for another episode of No Offsides, where we like to play, where we like to talk hockey, sponsored by Champion Hockey. Uh, I'm Dan Dean. I'm Justin Wood. And these are our guests, champ, tra- Champion Trash Panda's owner, Eric Hirsch. And uh, they was told to introduce him as the Jabroni Goaltender Gizzy. Um, how are you guys doing? Good. Thanks for having us. How yeah. are you guys doing? Good, good. So, you know, we, this is take two, but we talked about, you know, why why is your social media channel so popular? Um, I think it's just the range of, of what we post. Um, some days it's just a regular championship roster post, um, stats, schedules, and then other days it's like I want to Photoshop someone's head in. I want to make a video of them doing something stupid. It really just varies on whatever we're in the mood for that day because everyone loves – the good old Photoshop faces. Um, we have one buddy of ours who probably once a day he'll uh, he'll Photoshop everyone's faces into the uh, into a video of just something stupid. So usually that'll make it onto the page. Nice. And the best part about them too is that it's not clean. Never. <laughs> Never. So, can't oh, be. Is it the so is it the, the the touch and cut from like an iPhone? Um, I honestly have no idea what he uses. I mean, me and my buddy, uh, the uh, the GM, David, we use, like, the Snapchat stickers a lot of the times to Photoshop okay. people. But we have one kid that, like, he gets these videos, and he'll throw, like, a picture of, like, Gizzy doing, like, a split dancing at some place. And he'll have, like, just the most convoluted things that you could think of. He will send once a day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because – so, like – and – when I, I know that I started following y'all when my brother started playing for you. And I was like, what the hell is going on on this channel? <laughs> I was like, well, I love it. Oh, it's great. But I, you have to like get adjust yourself. Cause like, you're like, all right, it's, you know, they're trying to, it, it's a tournament team or, you know, it's just a, uh, at first you guys were like, just like a, a men's league team. Right. And so you're like, okay, like this is a men's league team but they have all these followers and it's all their posts are ridiculous. And I get, and after you, after you like gauge it, you're like, Oh, this is kind of funny. <laughs> Professionalism goes out the window fast. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, that's not as fun. Like if you just post like the same old rosters and schedules and stats like that, of course you have to have that stuff, but I'm a person that, I mean, I love playing, I love hockey, but I also like the fun aspect of it, you know, having fun with the boys, making fun of the boys. Like, I eat that shit up. So I'll always, like, have something ready to post, something to go, just to just to bag on someone. <laughs> now, there there is also a lot of shit talking in your uh, DMs. Yeah, it usually is how it goes when you got – I think he's he just hit 67. We have the oldest player, roller hockey player, probably ever to play. Um Jimmy Dean, I don't know if you heard of him or not, but um, probably Sounds the like nobody. Some up. Sounds like a nobody. I mean, you guys should probably drop him the free agency. No one's going to pick him up. We've tried, um, but Gizzy for some reason wants to keep him around. That's the problem. <laughs> I, don't, well, I, don't, I don't know. He hasn't been playing defense lately. We might have to. Might have to get, cut the cord on him. Yeah, you, I mean, eventually you got to st- you got to cut the umbilical cord because the guy the guy's just going to mooch off you for as long as he can. <laughs> But so I'm interested, right? Because, you know, you started out as a, you know, you were a men's league team, right? I mean, how did Trash Pandas all together start? Giz, you want to answer that one? Oh, God. Yeah. Um, So we started out um, just a few of us playing at the park outside um, near our houses on our feet. We never skated. We never did any, um, like we never played organized hockey really growing up. 
And um, I got to give him a shout out, um, our captain, Mark Hefner. Um, he kind of came up with part of the idea, uh, you know, designed our first jerseys. And we really just started out as like a goofy men's league team. Uh, you know, every season we'd go 0-8, 0-8, 0-8. Um, and, you know, being a goalie, uh, for me at least, um, I was always told to just, you know, fill in whenever I can for every team that I can, you know, uh, starting out just to kind of make connections. And, um, you know, as the years went on, I would fill in for literally every team possible. I'd play four or five games a night. Um, and then a lot of these better teams started to fold or their players weren't happy. And like here and there, we'd kind of pick, you know, a couple guys from each team and, you know, the trash pandas, you know, it took years um, and we're still trying to grow, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's really just kind of crazy how it all happened um, because I don't think, you know, at least me or any of us really thought we'd ever be playing um, the level we are playing, even though it is minor Paiha, you know, from a E-League men's roller team to this far. I don't think we ever really imagined that. Yeah. And, you know, I actually have a funny story because, my first uh my first run in with y'all was um when it was called Tab Ramos. And so and before before it came Highline. And so I was home visiting. My brother's like, bring your stuff, we'll probably we'll put you on my team. And I think I'm pretty sure we played you guys on one of his teams that was terrible, right? <clears throat> and so, you know, my brother likes to infamously play in lower divisions so that he can do most of the work. Gotta pay the stats, you know. Yeah, well, and so and I, I've been on him for it forever to like, dude, why don't you just go play in the draft league? Like, sure, play on like other teams, but like play in the draft league and like do something different. And eventually did. But part of the story was like, I, the only reason why I know it was y'all is because you can't miss the Eric Hirsch uh, uh, cage, but like the cage push out yep. right? and, and the glasses. Yep. Right? So can't I knew it was y'all. After after my brother started playing for you, and I was like, "Oh shit!" And I was like, "I almost fought you guys." <laughs> I, I do remember this story. Actually, I don't know if Gizzy could remember this, but I I remember this game. We we played you guys, and this was probably maybe like five six years yeah. ago, and we stunk. I mean, like Gizzy said, yeah. we were zero and eight, and I remember we got like absolutely annihilated that game. I don't I don't think we touched the puck the whole game. I think it was like an eight nothing clean. And we were just pissed at your brother, too. Because your brother's sandbagging in the E-League, skating circles around us. But I'll, I'll never – yeah. Now that well, you I, remember, I remember the chirps, too, because I wore, I wore my Aces stuff. Yep. And you guys were like, what the fuck is this? Like, what, what the fuck are you wearing? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Sounds like us, too. So, so, I mean, the re reason why I brought that story up is because, uh, you know, Gizzy kind of went into the evolution, right? And I'm – curious on how the evolution of you know like oh and eight went to paiha yeah so um i would say probably within like the last three years we started taking it a little more seriously we went from just playing one night a week at tap ramos highline or great american center now but we started playing one day a week there and then we uh, just to get more reps in as a team we started playing twice a night and then that eventually evolved to most of us playing like three, four times a week with each other, just meshing and gelling. And, and we definitely saw the improvement over time because over the years we got bumped up to like the next division and the next division, the next division. And then um, like, as he said, over time, you do meet different guys that like their teams fold and they want to join you. So we kind of built off of that. And then about three years ago, your brother was actually the first guy, um, to play with us in a tournament. It was like our first tournament we ever did. It was up in Skate Safe, Long Island, Premier. It's an awesome tournament. We try to play in it every year since we played that year. But um, it was the first time I think maybe 90% of our team has ever played a tournament. Um, your brother was probably the only one that ever had any tournament experience. <laughs> um, so we played in that tournament. And some somehow um, it was probably one of the most legendary tournaments in Pandas history just because it was the most insane performance I've ever seen from Gizzy because we were getting like completely outplayed by every team. Like they were possessing the puck. We had no idea how to even run a breakout. It was all still new to us. And we tied like 
uh, minor and semi-pro PIHA teams that weekend. And uh, we actually beat the Grizzlies in the se- uh, the quarterfinals to go to the semifinals, uh, where we lost to um, the Long Island Snipers Yeah. in the semifinals. And we had no business playing any of these teams or even being competitive. Um like I said, your brother was the only one that had any of that experience of running like an actual roller hockey place. So um, after that tournament, we all kind of got bit by the bug where we just wanted yeah. to keep playing in these tournaments and we just wanted to keep having fun because playing is fun, but also hanging out with the boys for a weekend and just you kind of, you know, you gel together and it's a lot of fun. So then that spiraled into like we were doing tournaments um, probably – Three years ago, we've probably done a tournament every couple months now, and uh, probably around last year we played. You actually played with us, if you remember. You played. Uh, we're oh, still God. somewhat new to the tournament scene, yeah. but you did play a tournament with us um, down in Virginia. And not, was, not my fondest of, not my fondest of tournaments, but yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. So we, uh, we we played together, and it was around that time where we started meeting different teams and playing different teams that uh, played in uh, Paiha. So we, we kind of got the idea around then to, to maybe try to sign up and see where it would take us, um, if we could get approved to get in. So um, with the process of that was um, we, we signed up, we talked to um, the Paiha people, and they said, um, hey, like, we were trying to kind of figure out what our skill level was to get into the um, divisions, because obviously we're not a pro team. Uh, We didn't think we would be a semi-pro team or even competitive in the semi-pro team because, like Gizzy said, a lot of us had that background of playing on feet. Like, we're still – we're somewhat new to the roller hockey game. Um, But uh, eventually we we were told, hey, we're a minor team, so we signed up for the minor division, and that's where we started playing the uh, Paiha section of of the minors. Okay. Yeah, and, you know, you're looking at it, right, and is this your first or second year playing Paiha? This was our, our first year playing. Okay. I mean, we really only started doing serious tournaments. Maybe last year was when we played, like, every possible tournament. Like, any regional that came near us, we were on top of it. We were playing there. And a lot of the times, truthfully, like, we were still kind of trying to figure out how to play together and really just how to mold ourselves into roller hockey players. Okay, yeah, I'm just pulling up, like, uh, stats and stuff like that and, like, standings from uh... – it, Gizzy, it seems like you were the the cowbell for um for the pie off season. In that, uh, yeah, I mean we we had a really good season as a team. Um, like Eric said, we really didn't know where our skill level was. Um, and uh, you know, a couple teams reached out to uh, Anthony Flynn and they told him we should be a minor team. So we just said, okay, whatever. Yeah. Um, so we hopped in and yeah, we had a, we had a really good season as a team. Uh, I was fortunate to have some great defensemen around me, even your brother, um, you know, Mr. James Dean, but, uh, yeah, it was awesome. It was everything about it. Uh, you know, went well, the travel was awesome. And it was just, it was a great experience for us as a whole, you know, like I uh, said in take one, but you know we didn't get in take two yet. I'm actually still in Colorado. I'm in my little cabin right now. <laughs> I just don't want to leave, you know. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Gizzy, you posted a 12 and one record regular season, uh, 832 save percentage. Uh, I mean, Tyler, I got to play with Tyler. Justin, and I did a uh, not too long ago. He's a he's a great guy. Young guy, young kid, right? And so he went six and one, uh, and a uh, eight uh, eight hundred save percentage. Um, I mean, and <clears throat> looking at your stats, a two forty one goals against average is pretty solid in roller hockey. You know, so you know regular season had solid. You're looking at uh, what was it that old guy on defense led your team in points, right? <laughs> um, Eric, you threw in a few goals and assists. But what I'm interested, in, Eric, is uh, from what I'm told is in big moments, you there there was no ego, right? You were you were capable of like stepping aside and be like, best line go out, right? I mean that that takes a lot as an individual and like really kind of shows personality of like, you know, like, hey, I, I want to win, right? So, I mean that's. And actually, that's like something that my brother always talks about too. Is kind of like 
Eric's got his shit together most of the time. Um, <laughs> uh, but like, you know, running the team, he does, you do all the backdoor stuff of like doing all anything that needs to be done for the team and jerseys too. Right. So, I mean, my, my brother can't say nothing but good things about you. And then of course there's just kind of like your DM talk. That's just kind of funny as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, with the, uh, with the uh, taking a step back kind of thing. It's like, it's important to have those guys that are able to kind of just like know their role. And I think that is a huge reason. I think our team really succeeded this season was because um, everyone kind of gelled and meshed into what their role was. Like we have like our bottom pairing guys that will show up and, and and I'm one of those guys where I'll just grind those, the, the other team down until those guys can get refreshed and go back out there and maybe they'll put in a goal. So, and that's what creates those big moments. And then, you know, like it's it's not just like a one person show. Like we all just kind of buy bought in this year, and really, I mean, you saw the results because uh, yeah. um, right before we we signed up, we actually entered a tournament out in Pittsburgh um, through Echo, and we signed up for like the uh, the A B division just to get some sort of like preseason going, playing against some of these teams, and we uh, we actually we actually played against a lot of like pro players, and I mean, hundred percent they they outplayed us, they beat us. But we kind of saw that, like, where we can improve on, and we took those improvements and kind of put them towards eventually what was our high high season. Okay. I mean, looking at it, you have, for the minor division, you have th- three different – well, four different, I don't know, uh, sections, divisions. I, it, it gets kind of weird, right, because it's the Northeast Division, the Atlantic Division, the Dixie Division, and the Rocky Mountain, right? Right. And y'all crossed over between the Atlantic because you guys were in the Atlantic division. And you crossed over with the Northeast division, right? right. And you play most of your division and then you cross over and play the Northeast. <clears throat> um, I mean, who would you rank as like – and I know the Sting was with you over in Colorado, but were they kind of your best competition? Like is there someone that was in your division that is, you know, potentially as good as the Suffolk Sting? Um, Giz, you want to comment on that? I feel like, I mean, uh, I think, you know, the sting all, every game we have with the sting was an amazing game. They were all one goal games, uh, except the one game they beat us, um, out of the five. So, I mean, they were definitely our, our toughest competition, no doubt. Um, I think, uh, but if you were to say a second team, probably the gladiators, they, um, you know, they, they ended up beating us, uh, one game, uh, and they were – they had some really good shooters. They they had a good um, core, I would say, of players. And, um, yeah, I, th- I would say the Gladiators. Right, Eric? I mean, is there any other – Yeah. They, they were also the fastest, I thought, the Gladiators. Like, those guys had very similar, like, a high-level breakout. And our first game we played against them of the season, I mean, they came to play. They beat us 7-2. to two. And that was kind of like a reality check for us because up until then, I think we were like nine and oh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so you're on a high note, you kind of get gut checked a little bit, probably a good thing. Right. Um, I mean, you look at it, right. And you look at stats between you and Suffolk Sting, and you're talking about when you went to Colorado and everything besides the game you lost was a one goal game. And you just look at the stats straight across. Uh, I mean, you take their overtime wins Right. And they're 18 and two. You're 18 and two. You look at goal differential. You're both plus 52. Right. So there's really the two best teams made it from the Northeast, made it to uh, Colorado. Right. Um, But when you look at the Dixie division, you have actually the third place team made it to Colorado. Right. So there was like a, Big change in you know where the second where the first place team lost in the finals I think it was uh, where the Rebels lost to the Fire Ants and then the Fire Ants represented, um, but you know based on watching pretty much all your games besides the finals the last game of the finals, um, did you think that your just the Northeast divisions are just better overall than the other two? So. So what I think is, at least this is what I noticed as as a goalie. I think that the was it the Dixie Division yeah. um, versus our division. I think it's a completely different game. 
I think the, the Northeast division and the Atlantic division, I think it's more like run and gun, very fast paced hockey. And then I think the Dixie division, you know, and we've only, we only played two games against them. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think they play a much different pace, you know, not that that's a bad thing at all, um, but it's definitely a slower paced, more physical, more grindy out game, I think. Um so for me, as a goalie, that would just be the differences. You know, uh, I faced a lot more shots in the Northeast than I did in the Dixie, but I think the Dixie was a little bit more quality shots. If that okay, makes okay. okay. As I a mean, goalie, which one of those two styles wears you down more? See, I'm I'm weird. I like facing shots. I yeah, I would cool. prefer to face 45 shots in a game. You know what I mean? I hate the games where it's I face six shots in the in the game. You know what I mean? Because then I'll give up two goals and then I'll never hear the end of it from the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> Got it right. So your brother too. Your brother will always chime in on that. If Gizzy oh, lets if Gizzy could have the best game ever, if he lets in two goals, your yeah. brother's still gonna give it to him the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also hear that oh my brother's an ass, so um you know, I hear like he's like He'll sit there and just start even uh, in between periods, just kind of chirping at you as well. Oh yeah, I mean he, it, like what, like when we go to tournaments, right? If we don't play early, like we go out at night. You know what I mean? We're all in our twenties. We all like to have fun. So like, if I ever go out at night, he always. I mean, every time I give up a goal, he goes, "Oh, did you go out last night?" You know, <laughs> he loves talking with me in that way. But like, that's just like our thing at this point. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Now, you you, t- you played the tugboats, right, in the Rocky Mountain Division. It it seemed like out of the four divisions, they seemed potentially to be the weakest. I mean, is it just a skill gap, or I mean, what's the what's the difference? Because their games in the playoffs were ugly at times, at most of the time, I should say. Yeah, so so with those guys, I feel like it's similar to what Giz said, where where they do play that grindy game, but it's more of like um, with the Dixie Division, I feel like they play that grindy game, but they're also able to organize like a regular breakout zone entries, and I feel like with the Rocky Mountain Division, at times they kind of lack some organization, breaking it out and getting it into the zone. But I will say, like playing against those guys, like those guys were not afraid to like light you up on open ice if they see you coming like those guys play the body hard like they're hard players <laughs> love it i mean i'm sure it's not fun because uh yeah I, that's but oh yeah i mean every game we watched to them they were they were throwing the body up until the end the score didn't matter and and that's probably how they made it out there was because they were they were such a physical team that they'll grind those teams down and i think because the uh Xfinity Sports Arena, where the uh, where the finals was played out of, is such a big rink compared to most rinks. I mean, it's, right, guys? It's probably like a size and a half. It's probably bigger than Highline. Oh, it's, everything's bigger than Highline. <laughs> yeah, it is weird going from Highline, and like we love Highline. Like, I mean, I I play there six nights a week. Like, we love it there. It's just it's so different. Like, even as a goalie, like when you go from Highline to another rink. Because your angles are so different, you know. Well, you're you're practically playing at Great American Hockey. You're playing on a European size rink yeah. with American goals. Is essentially how I compare it, right? Yeah, that's fair. And so, I I still don't understand how the hell you guys play offsides there. It blows my mind. Well, we don't. It's so, crazy. um, so the A division, the men's open A division. Uh, plays no offsides. We came to an agreement a couple seasons ago on that. And then, I mean, I play in the Tuesday and Wednesday draft there, and that's no offsides too. But once you get into a B league or lower there, it's all offsides, which sucks. It's awful. Hard. It's awful. I mean, especially it's like in the rink. It slows it slows the game down. So it, for as a goalie, it's like okay, but as a player, you take you have everything is either cross and shoot. Or cross stop and wait for everyone to come to you, and it's just I when I come back to play, I fucking hate it. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah, it's I mean, just- I I got to skate there when we were there, and we were just kind of messing around, and I almost ran to the boards a couple times when I was going backwards because I would not expect it to be that close. It's crazy. 
I mean, it's the rink I grew up on, and I'm actually hearing that they're getting still mat now. Yes, oh. yes, we are. Which is good um, because when we skate on that rink, it seems like all the partying that has that happens on it has uh, kind of warped the tile a little bit. Yeah, so we we are excited that we're getting the new mat um, soon, and then for the new state wars, uh, the fall invitational. It's coming in November. It'll be in for that, so that'll be awesome. Nice, that's awesome. Hell yeah. Now, is it nice having all the volleyball girls there? <laughs> well, I play volleyball there. Yeah, gives, gives a dual, nice. dual sport athlete. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I love volleyball. <laughs> Hell yeah. So let's so talk no comment about, on the girls. Yeah, no talk. <laughs> he's, not, he's not. He's not going on record with that one. Yeah. Why do you know he's going to stop playing Thursdays? He stopped playing Thursdays with us so he could go play volleyball. <laughs> Hell yeah. He's not wrong. <laughs> now, there might be some incentive there. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're talking pie hot, right? Let's talk Colorado. How sick is that Colorado Springs rink? Probably the best rink I've ever played at or even been at. Like, the everything was just insane. Like, the scoreboard being electronic where they put your logo on there and the shot counter, like that's that's nothing like what we have around here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yoder Yoder does some good work there at that rink, uh, and I mean, you even have you have the 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 TV in between the benches, and then yeah. on each end is a scoreboard as well. That's all electronic. Yeah, like Not, nothing yeah. compares to it. And then you have the the bleacher setup was awesome too. Um, I had family come out there, so it was cool to have them watch us play. I have family in Colorado, so they took the drive down to watch the weekend. And they loved being the bleachers, how close you are to the rink. And they even watched some of, like, the pro games, and they said it was just, like, such an awesome experience to watch, like, that level of hockey, that up close, and you can't beat it for that. You know, I was also told, because we had uh, Yoder on pr- prior to uh, Pile Finals, and uh, I was also told, which the Pandas probably would have never made it through the weekend, but in the, the pro locker room, there's a beer fridge. <laughs> so the Pandas would have never made it through the weekend yeah, nope. if, <laughs> if the if the fridge was available. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. That 9 a.m. game was tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a tough <laughs> game to play. Well, and I watched that game, right? And I, I immediately text my brother and I was like, what the fuck's going on? I was like, I, I gave him a list. And he's like, that is everything we talked about. And he, at the end, he goes, we're just not a morning team. Never. We probably never <laughs> will be, honestly. <laughs> yeah, mornings are tough for the pandas. At least when, while we're in our 20s, we won't be a morning team. <laughs> <laughs> when we hit your brother's age, we might. We're 67. <laughs> After the early bird special, we'll go to bed and then we can wake up early. Nice, nice. There you go. You got to get your AARP discount. <laughs> now, I also heard that you guys had a little uh, bit of a blast in Nashville as well. Uh, Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we didn't play too much hockey, honestly, out there. Um, guys were missing for games. We had no idea where half the team was. <laughs> um, that was a hell of a tournament. There was one game where, like, there was, like, five guys on our team. They were like, where's the other half of our team? And they were just nowhere to be found. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I heard there was a uh, a bachelorette party next to you guys at your Airbnb. Yeah. Um, your brother was pretty familiar with them. <laughs> as were a couple I don't pandas. doubt that at all. <laughs> as, as were a couple pandas that, that weekend. Um... <laughs> that's that's yeah. kind of the dream, right? Yeah, they were interesting. They were a unique group. Nice ladies. Nice ladies. Yeah, it was a it was a bachelorette party. I think they were from like the Midwest. West Virginia. Yeah, Virginia. Yeah, they were they were, they were far they out. Were they were. Uh, yeah, they were so good. They're opening up beer bottles with their teeth. It was crazy. Oh God, that, that's a keeper. <laughs> it was it was a crazy one. <laughs> now. Before we move on from Paiha, I just got to ask you, like, how, how do you like the schedule, like how they schedule out um, their season? 
So I personally, do you mean like the four games and you play like, once a month? Yeah, like the once a month, like you have like a tournament run robin kind of weekend and then you play the next month or maybe depending on how you're scheduled out. Yeah, so so myself, I love it. Um, we we ran a pretty deep bench for that reason. I mean, four games in a day doesn't seem like a lot till you're actually playing and you're on like the tail end of your, your last games. I don't think we had a single weekend where we had less than nine guys. And those games definitely, especially playing in the Northeast, where I feel like they're fast, but they're also physical, where by the third or fourth game, you could tell, like, what teams are conditioned for, for that style of play. So, I mean, I loved it because it was easy to get the guys to, to commit to one weekend a month or two weekend a month. It's, it's a lot easier than having to do – I believe, like, years ago, we had a buddy on our team that he won in, like, the like late – or early 2010s, he won um, semi-pro. And he said it used to be, like, two games a weekend back and forth, and you would play another weekend. You're playing, like, yeah, six games in a month, and you're traveling three times in that span. Yeah, you – yeah, because I had a short little stint. Um, and so you were – it was every weekend. Yeah. And so it was like – yeah, it was like travel hockey where you were – it was almost like when you are playing – if you were like if you were to play hockey growing up and you're on a travel team every weekend you were going somewhere and every team had to have a home rink right and so if you didn't have a home rink you couldn't play is what i think what the rule was so you would have to have a home rink and they would people would have to travel to you you'd play four you play your round robin games that on that day and then the next weekend you'd be at someone's home or someone else's home rink and yeah it was it i didn't last long because it was a lot of traveling and i was in college and it just it, it was a lot. And that's why I was just asking because, I, you know, potentially if we can get things going down here, there could be another division added. So who knows? Because I sure as shit ain't traveling up north to go play hockey. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, I want to know their opinions on the fact that the Dixie is a draft league versus is that every other division gets to bring their own team? Yeah, so so we were able to kind of handpick our guys from our home rink. Um, oh. Me and Giz really got together around like July, August, and we were trying to figure out like what guys could be like that locker room guys that know their roles, and then what guys like your brother that hey, if we if we're down, that's the type of guy you want out there to score a goal. So I feel like having that draft style in the Dixie, and I, and I even asked them about it before. I asked them why is it a draft league, and they said it's so hard to get guys to to get together and organize it and everything your first couple seasons. I know they mentioned that they want to eventually branch out to bringing in like individual teams, but for now I think they just have to do a draft style to try to keep that balance and keep guys wanting to compete. Cause if you have one team running through everyone the yeah. first season or two, you're going to get all those guys to fall off and not want to play. Well, it's like we were potentially going to put a team in that, in that division and we were going to take traveling, but we're not going to take all of our guys and throw them into a draft league. So, yeah, I kind of hate that. I'm not going to lie. Well, and me Thank personally, you, I, that's how I feel. Yeah. And, and personally, you know, I'm like, you're going, you're, you're doing a draft team and you're at a disadvantage because you're going up against Huge. a team that's been playing. Like these teams that you're playing against are probably playing together in men's league, right? So they're playing with each other yeah. two, three times a week, like you guys are for the most part, from a from majority of your team possibly. And then you're going and you're playing in Paiha against guys that are thrown together. And, I mean, they gave you a good run for your money in, in the playoff game, right? But the first game was – I mean, they got worked the first two games of their round robin, right, in, in Colorado. And it showed because it was – they had, I don't know, 18 games or whatever it was that they played – 18 games is still not enough to gel to go to a bigger to go to verse better competition and try and win. Yeah, you're at, you're at a huge disadvantage, yeah. right? Because you're you're picking apart your league whereas we can like realistically we can take whoever we want. We could take all we could take the 10 best players from our rink. Yeah. And they're like scattering it. So that's kind of crazy. That's wild. Yeah, and you know, and that's why like I said we had, we were potentially going to put a team in this upcoming season, but it's still, I think it's still a draft league and our guys are not interested in that. So 
either we get our we get our rink set up and we get create a whole new division or it becomes a non-draft league in that division and maybe we maybe we play in it who knows but because like it also i mean their schedule's a little wonky too they're playing like three times a month yeah well yeah i did when we look at their schedule i do see that they're playing like like they start their season in like november and they run until january so you have to pretty much streamline what is it they play 15 games i think it is they have to streamline those 15 games plus your playoff games in like yeah. a matter of three months and then you also have your i think their playoff series was a little bit different they did best of three for semifinals and a best of five for the finals while ours was just like best of three for the entire playoff weekend yeah so that's a lot of games that you have to get guys to commit to and and play really and and, and they play on like a it's uh technically an outdoor rink where it's just got a roof over top of it so they hit a lot of rainouts too yeah and they were actually forcing games to sundays so not only are you committing to Saturdays, but you're committing to Sundays as well, which could have been, and I don't know, I didn't really look into it, but it could have been the reason why the top team just took such a big hit. Not sure. I could probably ask around. We play against those guys a lot. But yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, I'm, I'm with all of you. It's just, to me, it's a disadvantage to to just, it's fun. like, I, I get it. It's introductory seasons and they take a couple of seasons to get more guys interested. But you're for that for the, however many seasons long it takes, you're at a disadvantage, and it's unfortunate. Yeah. But I guess if you have fun in the process, then so be it. Yeah. But on the out, outside looking in, eh. So if you guys were to bring it down by you, would you have it where you just submit your teams and you guys play each other, and then you could kind of knit, you kind of pick your team built around whoever you want it to be built around and. Yeah, I mean, that's the. I mean, because so we have we bought one of those Pittsburgh rinks. Our our league did that we play them, mm -hmm. and so uh, we're still looking for a place to put it. And when that time comes, I uh, will reach out to uh, the Yoders and see like what can we do because they were talking about doing like a North Carolina South Carolina division because they potentially have two teams in South Carolina or North yeah in South Carolina, and so uh, so we might be able to form something and i think at that point i think it would have to be you bring your own team because of the so far spread out whereas all the atlanta guys live in and around atlanta and so like, we play against those guys that are in that division all the time when we go down for echo tournaments or any other tournament down in uh, georgia right so those guys all know each other it would be like essentially taking your t a your a or gold division whatever you want to call it that you have and taking guys and piling them into four teams. That's essentially what it is. It's their house league teams that are just guys like, yeah, I want to play in this. And then they drafted them. Hmm. So. Yeah. Well, I, boys, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but I do have to go to work. Well, it's all right, guys. It's been a pleasure. These are awesome. My little devil's plug. Let's go, devils. Yeah. Yes, no. Oh, not that poverty franchise. Um, but I appreciate you guys having me on. Um, and hopefully we get to play soon. We're gonna get down there for maybe an echo tournament or something. We can link up. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. Gizzy, good seeing you again. You too, boys. See you. Have guys. a good one, guys. Yep. Bye. Uh yeah, I'm still showing. Um yeah, so Eric, you guys, I mean, what is the future for Piha? I mean, you guys have plans, right? Yeah, so our first season, I mean, it exceeded all expectations, really. And it got to the point where we probably have about 30 guys interested in joining next session. So um, we decided that those guys that want to join, you know, um, a couple of them are close friends of mine. So I, I'm t I told them, hey um you guys could 100 percent get a team together get your guys together and the next steps are is obviously we're going to move up to semi-pro next session our team um uh, me gizzy your brother your brother will not be a sandbagger <laughs> he'll be forced to play semi-pro next season so he'll, he'll be playing some some really good competition in that division and then we're taking um uh, about we have about 30 guys um, splitting them up, and we're going to have two minor teams, I believe, is the plan for next next season. Nice. So we're That's definitely awesome. looking forward to that because 
I do think um, we are working on also trying to get a weekend at Highline to do a festival there, which would be really cool to, to have the experience there where we could have all three teams out there and, and playing at our home rank with, with the bar upstairs and, you know, Highline's like our home. So we always love playing there. Yeah. I mean, and you guys hold the, you guys held your first, uh, the champion pandas Ironman. Yeah. So we, uh, we hosted an Ironman, um, at the great American center at the beginning of January and we, uh, it was our first tournament. I mean, I had no experience running a tournament. I mean, I see Echo run tournaments, um, Premier, Tour, State Wars, and I kind of just took a little bit of the blueprint from that. And then I know Gizzy has played in a lot of Ironman tournaments being a goalie. Um, I've probably only played in like one or two. I am not a fan of them myself. Um, I get winded in like a minute, so I'm ready to get <laughs> off the bench. Um, so for me, it's like Ironman's like 12 minutes playing straight is no good for me. But um, so we hosted one and Gizzy kind of set the rules together. Um, he was marketing it like crazy. He was going to Great American Center every day trying to get teams to sign up. I was trying to get teams to sign up. So we had a really good turnout for our first one. I think we had about 13 teams sign up. OK. Um, or maybe 14 teams. I think we had six in the A pro division, whatever you want to call it. We had a cash prize in that division. And nice. then we had four in the B and four in the C and we still keep getting asked when the next one's going to be. And that's still, it will be in the near future probably before uh, our seasons get on the way. But um, it was definitely a cool experience to be able to host something like that. Um, I also learned that I'm not a ref. Um, I had to ref that weekend because uh, a couple of our refs had bailed last minute. So I threw on the stripes. Um, I'm horrible at it. Uh, I called a penalty in the championship game. Some guy took a slap shot near me. It was, it was ugly. So I learned my lesson that week and I'm not, I'm not being a ref anytime soon. So. Oh man. <laughs> I've retired from refing several times. Yeah. I'm after that, I'm a little scarred. <laughs> <laughs> Called the penalty. It was a blatant penalty. And the next thing I know, he's, he's like, are you kidding me? He takes a slap shot at me. Throw uh, him out. Was... Yeah. I would have, I would have tossed him. I oh. tried. The other, the other ref told me, he said, we can't do that. I said, what do you mean? We can't do that. He's like, I'm, I'm, he's like, he was an actual ref. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll go with your call, but you got to get the game under control. Uh, I know. I mean, shooting a puck at a ref, that's intent to injure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get yeah. into attempt to injure and unsportsmanlike and just get rid of him. Yeah. Should have thrown the book at him, but I mean, it was still <laughs> a great event. Like, I'm good friends with the guy who did, and he felt horrible after. He even played with us throughout the season for Paiha. So he was, he was just <laughs> lost in the moment. Even I better. Mean, I probably shouldn't have called the penalty in the championship, let it played out. But uh, yeah. it's a penalty, it's a penalty. Yeah, yeah it was a tough call to make in a championship, but he shouldn't have done it. I know. What yeah, was it? Then, what was the call? It was uh it was the he was holding someone's stick, like wrapped around on the ground holding it. And I said I had to call it, like no matter what. I mean the guy's trying to stick handle and you're you're on the floor grabbing his stick, so he can't. Yeah. yeah. So now you the trash pandas are now linked with champion hockey, right? Yep. I don't I can't even keep up with how many jerseys y'all have these days anyway. Right. And so you, you guys are you guys unveiled your new jerseys, pinstripes. Yep. I mean, who is it you that does all the designing, or do you just throw it to the throw it to the champion and like is like we want pinstripes and then they just come up with it? Um, so it's a little bit of both. Um, we did these jerseys um, kind of based off of the Arizona Diamondback style where they had um, they wore pinstripes in like the early 2000s and they had like the similar um, writing on the front and then some logos on like the sleeves and the shoulder. So we kind of based it off of that and I, I sent it to Champion. I said, hey, do you guys think you could do something similar to that? And they came out awesome. Everyone, whenever we play against people, they're always like, that's like the coolest jersey because... The only time you really see pinstripe jerseys is obviously like you have like the everyone knows like the Roadrunners have their pinstripe jerseys. I love their pinstripe free. jerseys. Their, their their pinstripes are my favorite. Yep, definitely. And, and everyone else does them wrong. Yep. There's there's some teams. I know there's another team. I think they're called Buzz. I think they're like they wear oh, like the, the yellow yeah, the Buzz. And, yeah, yeah, they do like the yellow and brown pinstripes, and I love those ones. But I know there's certain teams that do it right. We wanted to make them as obnoxious as possible. <laughs> so we had like the teal on the front, 
Um, we have like all these different color clashes on there. And then, um, yeah, so we originally got those because we have State Wars coming up um, tomorrow, actually. So we wanted to to do something a little bit new for uh, for like the, I guess, the new tournament season. So we wanted to, to start wearing them for that. And then everyone from the pandas was like, oh, I want a, ba- a, a pinstripe baseball jersey now. So it's probably going to end up being our away jersey for Paiha next season just okay. because – they're obnoxious and we're all obnoxious. So it kind of suits us a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised you don't have like your men's league jerseys and then you don't have jerseys that are like, uh, like that specifically for Paiha. Yeah. So we, we do have an original, uh, this is usually the logo we'll use for um, our men's league. We use uh, that's like just a regular raccoon. We've been using that one. Um, and I know Gizzy had a hat. That was the other logo. Mm-hmm. Um, usually our purple jerseys, our purple and gray champion jerseys is mostly worn for, um, either our men's league team that all play Paiha together or for our Paiha team. But we try to keep it like certain jerseys for certain teams. Like we are probably going to allow, um, the other two minor teams to kind of design their own away jerseys, whatever they want to do, just to make it a little more fun to have, it's still going to be a Panda jersey, but they kind of have like that creativity. It's like their team, they could do what they want with it. Are That's you cool. fun? Are you funding all these jerseys? Oh no! no. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we always get asked though. Whenever, whenever we're playing, I always get asked, um, "How many different jerseys do you guys have?" Because we do have like four or five jerseys now. <laughs> so yeah, it's up there. Because I mean, I remember the, the the OG jerseys, the purple ones with the the old yep. raccoon on them. I mean, why the trash pandas? Yeah, so uh, I know Gizzy gave him a shout out at the beginning, but um, we actually kind of came in a little bit later. We we met the uh, captain Mark Hafner. He uh, he kind of brought a couple of us in, and then they already had the name set as the Trash Panda. So we kind of just took it and ran with it, and we kind of incorporated it into like any sort of hockey we play. Okay. Uh, I know a couple of uh, the other other guy, John De Silva. He actually has a tattoo on his thigh of um, the original logo. So he's got dedication. I know Gizzy has the original logo um, on his um, right here on his shoulder. He has a goalie mask with the with the raccoon in on it as well. So okay, heck yeah. I mean, I guess they got to go watch him play volleyball when he has a shirt off to see that one. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you want to see that, but (laughs) (laughs) but yeah, I mean, because you even have the like the default champion jerseys with the panda on it too. Yeah. Because I know my brother has been complaining that he didn't get his pants yet. Oh, my God. If I hear him complain about those pants one more time, every time I see him, did you get my pants? Did you get my pants? Well, (laughs) he wants, like, a size extra small. So I don't even know if they make an extra small. He wanted, like, some crazy size. (laughs) What? They're going to have a custom size for him, I think. Well, I don't know. The the, the, You know, they're saying he's trying to take my poster boy status. (laughs) And I, said, uh, I don't think he's even close. He's He'll too ugly. Soon. He's got one yeah. more year left. I think he said he's pulling a Brady. Yeah, he's he's got too many wrinkles. He's old. Yeah. Oh like, my god. He, he, you know, you look at it and you go, "Damn, champions going to spend more on a uh, makeup girl than they are, you know, hiring me." Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, you have to do a whole a whole day dedicated to getting him ready. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Got a makeup department, everything. You know, have to get a pack of cigarettes. You're gonna have to hit up the dispensary. Like he's expensive. Yeah, that's what I was yeah, gonna say. Trust me, he is an expensive date. I know. <laughs> but he hooks everyone up. Yep. <laughs> How's now, everything been with Champion so far? Awesome. Uh, I know they just released the the Legacy Wheel, so a couple of us were rocking those in Colorado, and and they were really nice. I mean, I loved them. Um, that Colorado surface is a little bit dusty, a little bit slippery. And I know a lot of our guys were complaining about it, but that weekend, I mean, I didn't have any problem moving out there. Um, stopping, starting was pretty, pretty easy. Um, their wheels are always top quality. I've, I've been using them now for probably going on two years. It'll, it'll be soon. Awesome. Yeah. I could definitely, those, uh, the legacies that like I go out there and I usually just skate around and go like one leg turns and I'm like, Oh, I'm not like I'm not. Usually, there's some sort of like oh, like wobble because I'm like I don't yep. want to slip. But the others, I'm like, okay, now I'm, it's even more difficult to like. I gotta get used to them. 
Right. I mean, the grip on them is crazy because yeah. I mean, I've, I've had a, a pair now probably for two, three months and they're still gripped to the surface. Like they did the first day. Like it's insane how durable they are too. So. Yeah. I, you know, I, you know, I got, I talk with Chris all the time. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's, I keep trying to, you should try and get on the boat, try and convince them to make the Bauer 4,500 mold <laughs> and uh, rename it. Cause we need it back. Yeah, we were actually uh, in our group chat. Uh, a couple of guys went to to get new skates, and they saw that I guess they have a new purple helmet out, CCM helmet. Yeah, I saw so that. So everyone yeah. in the chat was saying that uh, we should get the forty five hundred back and then have it panda purple. So I'll definitely hit on them for that because we we wanted to do, um, and it was never going to happen because it was such short notice between winning um, regionals for Paiha and getting to Colorado. But we wanted to try so hard to do purple chrome helmets for colorado oh, just to be so Ooh. obnoxious yeah i was gonna say I'm, you, your guys's game is obnoxious <laughs> yeah we, we really wanted to do that but i mean maybe next next season we'll be having some purple helmets because they did look pretty cool especially with the jerseys and i know all our guys were like well where do we get those and some guys were like, "Well, bring back the 4500s the, the old bauer helmets now did you find a place to get them done at so CCM makes them regular purple helmets. Like they produce yeah. them regular helmets. I know if we were to go the other route, it might be a little pricey having to have it customized a little bit. Um, Cause we did look into that to get the Chrome purple was like almost impossible, especially to get it done before you leave for Colorado and hope that there's no errors with it. So it's, it's a lot of turnaround to, to get it done, but who knows, maybe next season. We'll so is it, it would it be, order it custom with the chrome purple on it or would it be buy a helmet like a white helmet and then have it painted on yeah so they don't do the chrome purples i looked everywhere for it they only do um chrome gold they do silver that's the, they do just like kind of pro stock helmets yeah. they don't really do like a regular chrome purple i mean i saw a couple um customizations of it but i, I couldn't find i looked for so long. i probably spent like two three days just trying to find it but there's no luck. So then we kind of you're gonna you're gonna have to find a like a body shop or yep. like a painter that's, yeah. that will just cut do it themselves. Yeah, because we uh, I know Gizzy got his helmet actually customized for Colorado. Okay, so he used the guy to have um, a couple little purple stripes on it, like purple chrome stripes and some silver on it. So probably be giving that guy a call in a couple months if you want to go back to the chrome purples because I think that would just be so funny. <laughs> it would be hysterical. There you got. <laughs> You guys might get in more fights than ever if you <laughs> put on the chrome buckets. It's usually your brother starting them, though. That's the oh, problem. of course. Of course. <laughs> no, I'm not, never. I'm, I'm not surprised. It was the other guy's fault, though. It always is, right? <laughs> I mean, he was cranky at the last, one of the tournaments we were at, and he wanted to fight the ref because the ref made a bad call. <laughs> is that who went off on you? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, uh, Eric, Eric, is that yeah. who came after you? Was it Jimmy? Yeah, it might have been, honestly. He's always talking. That's the problem. He's always chirping someone. Doesn't matter what the score is. We'd be down by five. And I'm the same way, so I get it. A couple of us are always that same way. Like, we'll, we'll run our mouths no matter what the score is. And we just, we just play hard. Um, some guys respect it. Some guys hate it. Because we, we try not to be we, – we try to tether the line between being dirty and clean, and I think we do play that clean game, but we do just play, like, a very physical – I mean, we're a lot of us are, are big guys, too. I mean, half our team's over, like, six foot. So, I mean, it's definitely, you know. Yeah, I mean, the, the one thing I am curious about, though, is you know about the other Trash Panda team that popped up, right? I've heard about them. I actually saw their they signed up for for a tours regional down south. Ooh. Saw the team list for that. I thought aren't they like a nor aren't they? They were like north? a Florida team, I believe, like Are around they? that area, like like Missouri. Oh, I thought I thought they were. I thought they were like a Chicago team, but I could be wrong. Could, they, yeah, I think they're from like that. They might be around like Missouri, Chicago area. I know they played at um some Florida division. But I did Cup? see on on uh, tours posted like the uh, the regional team list, and I saw there was like a trash pandas team from like Missouri there. 
And okay. I know there's a couple Trash Panda teams. A lot of them that follow us are usually ice guys. We always try to, like, coordinate logos sometimes with them. Like, if they have logos they don't use, they'll send it to us. So it's all love for those guys. But as for that Roller Trash Pandas team, I, I think we got to arrange, like, a Panda Cup. Well, and that's, and that's what I was getting at. I want to yep. – like winner winner takes the pandas yeah i mean get us roller cup have one division the panda division <laughs> hey <laughs> the panda teams just play the whole weekend i mean just do a best of, best of seven panda cup right That's i mean I... i'll talk to jake yeah, I mean, we definitely want to make it down there to the next us roller cup too that's down there because that's one of the only places we really haven't been um is like down by you guys like north carolina south carolina yeah atlanta i know echo comes down to atlanta a lot but we haven't had the opportunity to go down there and our guys are always trying like the best part about our group of guys is they're always down to go anywhere we always travel pretty heavy we usually have like for colorado we were like the only team that had like 11 guys on the bench two goalies like our guys like we they love traveling we love this shit like it's never a problem getting a head count because you always have somebody that wants to play. That's oh, and, awesome. And you're always able to add guys too, it seems like. Yeah, we've never really had much of a shortage. Um, we, ha- we have our core five or six guys that play pretty much every tournament. Your brother, unfortunately, is usually one that plays pretty much everything with us. Um, Gizzy's usually always the goalie. And we always have like John DeSilva on D. Kurt Kroper on forward. It's usually about the same four or five guys that will play pretty much every every tournament with us. Uh, we've traveled to Pittsburgh, Nashville. Um, we go to Long Island every other month when it gets into tournament season. We do all the Marples, the State Wars, uh, Narch. We do all those. And I think this year we're going to try to make an attempt to go down and play tours in Florida. I know you guys played there last year with your brother. Yeah, we'll, so be, we're going, gonna... we'll be going back. So yeah. It's fun, man. It's a lot of fun. I heard the rink's awesome out there. It's it seems like it's that similar style to the Colorado rink. It might not have the the technology it does, but it just seems like it's, the tile and they're, the are ice. There, it's a three. Actually, it's a four ice rink complex, and they take three out of the four, and they uh, put tile like they either. I think they put the tile on some of the rinks on top of it, and so it's a it's definitely a sick setup because it's just roller 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 on all three rinks. Right, and uh, there's a bar restaurant there too, so you guys aren't winning the games because you guys yeah, are in the I bar. Mean, so. <laughs> you guys might go missing and be stuck at the bar upstairs. It happens. And there's hotels like right next to the rink too, so yeah. you guys, you guys are just gonna stumble out of the rink and stumble into the rink. Yeah, I think that that was our plan to do our big trip because we like to do one big tournament every summer. Uh, we okay. want to do two this year, but we didn't really expect to have to go to Colorado for Paiha, so obviously that was our priority, which yeah, we're not yeah. complaining about, of course. No, not at but... all. We, were, we wanted to do um, tours in Narch in California and try to make the trip out there, and a lot of our guys were down for that. But once Colorado came into play, we were like, yeah, we're all going to Colorado. So we really had, like, a full roster. We had 11 guys eligible for playoffs, two goalies out there, and then we had two guys that travel with the team, play on the team, and they're just on the, the IR, and they traveled out there. So we had, like, 15 guys piled up on the bench that weekend, so – it was definitely a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you had teams. Shit, there was a semi-pro team in the finals that had four guys. Yeah, four or five guys, right? And they guessed. I mean, obviously they guessed out, right? So, I mean, there it's just all depends. I mean, some teams load up and win their division, and then they can't travel. So, you just never know. Right. That, that was what I really admired about like us and the Sting was I think the Sting had the same exact situation where they had like their full roster out there. It was awesome to really have like you can't go back and be like, oh, like we didn't have this guy there. They didn't have that guy there. Like it was really like a best on best style tournament where you're playing like their best yeah. group versus our best group. Yeah, you know, and like I said, it Paya is just you I'm gonna call it off season roller because it's Everyone calls in season roller pretty much uh, June through August, right? So right. it's your off season roller for y'all. You know, if you're, you guys do state wars too, so it's like yep. you guys. It's your winter. Keep you guys going at high competitiveness. Get you guys in the tournament season. Yep. I mean, it's for guys who don't go to college or they're done with college. 
it's something it's some high quality roller to play. So, you know, I I even pitched to Paiha uh even lower division, which would like a because there's you know, Echo does like the club division and the other yeah. smaller tournaments do club division, and that seems to carry a lot of weight for tournaments, right? And so I was like, hey, you could add probably another division it everywhere by just doing club rename I mean, I, it I, rename it whatever you want yeah and boom you got more people playing because you just you know it's not it's not gonna be potentially the best hockey but it's more people dedicated to the game right and i think in the instance of club once you get i want to say past virginia club is pretty much non-existent hmm. in like north in the northeast it's yeah. really just a b um double a triple a pro and i know like there's so many guys that want to play like that club style but there's not really that much of like an opportunity for them to really be able to play it so i know that if they were to add like like you said like a club division because i would say minors probably high bronze low silver level um semi pros probably silver gold and then pros just platinum so i mean having that extra club division wouldn't definitely probably bring in a decent amount of teams that just want to travel on the weekend. I mean, that's a lot of the reason guys came to me and said, Hey, can we do a minor team next session? Because, you know, I want to travel with the boys. I want to have fun, you know, play some hockey and it is competitive hockey. Like we have guys that played NCAA, they played uh, ACHA, like they wanted to still play like competitive hockey and there's really not many opportunities left anymore so i mean yeah. paiha and state wars and those types of tournaments is really all those guys have left and you see like a lot of guys that transition from playing that competitive ice go immediately to roller when they graduate so yeah you know because it's either you jump into men's league and you know there are ice tournaments out there but um you know it's kind of like you look at it and you go there's more i would want to say that there's more opportunity especially close by for roller tournaments and ice hockey tournaments right That's which awesome. is which is just you know jesus christ <laughs> getting blinded this is, uh, but uh you know and you look at it and you're like if i can play more higher competition in roller why not and that's what kind of drew me to the staying with roller and not playing ice too is like it's a completely different game but i can go almost every month if i wanted to and go play in a roller tournament Right. Whereas if you go and you look at it, there's only a few people running ice tournaments every so often. Right. And I would say those ice tournaments are never as big as like a State Wars or a Narch. Like there's not like a household real ice tournament outside of like maybe like the ones in like Canada every year. But there's nothing like State Wars, Narch, Tours where you get almost 100 teams that will fly out there and play the whole weekend. Like there's so many more opportunities, I feel like, for roller. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you look at it too, right? You, in Roller, you have the big three tours, Narch and State Wars, right? I mean, you have now you have once a year Wish Cup, yep, which is coming up in June. And then now you're going to have USRC yep. as well that had a cash prize of nine, of like nine, ten thousand dollars. So, you're talking five tournaments that are going to be potentially huge, right? right. So you, you get, it starts from the end of winter all the way through spring and into the end of summer. Mm-hmm. And you're going to, you could play the highest of competition throughout all of them. So, you know, I, I got a question. Are you doing USRC when it goes to Long Island or are you going to do state wars? We haven't decided yet. It might just end up being we put in a team in, at each. Okay. Because, um, like, like I said, having that club division, and that's that's nothing like we have up here is, like, getting a club division is almost impossible at any of these tournaments. So, I mean, having that opportunity would definitely, I think, would bring more of our guys to want to play in that. And it's probably going to end up being, like, a 50-50 split because we have, like, 45 guys. <laughs> which will probably narrow down to like 25 want to play. So then you have to find what teams for what. Yeah. So, I mean, usually when we have like a club in bronze division, those types of divisions will usually end up sending like 
two teams and then figure it out from there. But most of the time we're ending up having our teams play like two club teams at the same time and they'll end up playing each other. And it's always fun to watch them play each other because they're all guys from the same rank and they're all yeah. friends. They grew up together. So I always love doing stuff like that. But yeah, we definitely, and I love skate safe. I think it's at skate safe, right? Yeah. It's a dual rink one. Yeah. Yeah. I love the schedule there. I feel like having the two ranks is so beneficial on like scheduling and time. Cause you don't have to worry. I mean, we're trying to get out as quick as possible and go out. So that, that's the, that's the big <laughs> thing for us. So once game starts slipping behind is when we start sweating a little bit. Uh, everyone, everyone gets thirsty. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem. You, you got Gizzy trying to go somewhere. You got, your brother trying to go to bed. It's, it's always a disaster. <laughs> yeah, he, he does be getting cranky, that's for sure. Now, but the question is, you know what you guys did to him, right, when you guys went to Nashville? You guys got him so tired for being out too late that he fell asleep with a jug of milk in his hand. Your brother? Yeah. I'm not surprised. He was he was tagging along with us wherever we went that, that weekend. We, we would go to every single bar, club. No matter where we went, we always saw your brother tagging with us, and he was—you were out there for a little bit with us too. You were hanging around. Yeah. Did you? Uh, <laughs> have you seen his spread on uh, what he eats? I've not. Honestly, I don't even—I didn't even know he ate. Yeah. I only see him at play hockey, and that's it. And then he's in bed. That's because he runs on nicotine and coffee and <laughs> fucking marijuana. Mm-hmm. And then and and then he uh, and then at night he just overindulges. And it's usually if it's if you don't get him like an actual meal, it's cookies, milk, like it, it's just trash. <laughs> so it fits in because you know trash pandas. He just eats but nothing but garbage. I've not seen it yet. So now next time he he doesn't like to stay with us because sometimes we stay a little bit closer to the bars, <laughs> and a little bit farther from the rinks. So he usually <laughs> prefers to stay near the rinks. Sometimes we're thirty minutes from where the closest bar is we're right next door to the bar but yeah we might have to drive 30 minutes to the rink to make up for it and no he's he hates that because he always says the running joke oh where'd you when we're ever playing in pa he always asked me he said where are we staying are we staying in new jersey still <laughs> so sometimes we're like 45 minutes away it's the funniest thing uh yeah he's uh he's a little cranky pants he's a fucker well, you've talked about something, kind of alluded to it a few times, and uh, it's something that I want your opinion on. Uh, I can't directly share it, but I'm sure you've seen the Tiger Woods and John Daly memes, right? I've not, actually. You've never oh. seen these? No. Oh. Well, there's the famous one, and it's like, you know, Tiger Woods dressed all proper, ready to play. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. John Daly sitting there smoking a cigarette. Yep. It's my favorite meme where it's just Tiger Woods is labeled ice hockey players and uh, John Daly's roller hockey players. I, I want your overall opinion on the roller hockey culture and uh, just kind of what that all entails. Yeah, so so the roller uh, roller culture as a whole, I think it is. I don't want to say it's not as serious, but I feel like it's you get a lot more fun with it, you know. It's like the, the style of play is a lot more fun. Guys are doing, I want to say, almost more creative things out on the rink. And it's it's a different style than ice. I mean, I, I grew up a roller player. I mean, I played roller as a kid, and I never really transitioned to ice. I played ice maybe two years in high school. I was horrible at it, so I gave it up rather quickly. I knew I wasn't going to the NHL. But there is definitely a different style because I feel like roller players, they kind of get better – on their own playing outside like there's more of a chance of a guy that started at like 15 16 or as a young adult becoming like a good player versus ice i feel like roller it's more about like the fun and the love of the game and it's like i feel like it's not that it's not taken seriously but it's like guys just go there and they and they go there just to have fun it's more of like a community where everyone knows each other you know everyone you see the same guys at every tournament you know and you get to know them over time and whereas like I know Dan said that there's not that there's the big now I guess five tournaments where you're seeing the same guys for all these tournaments. Whereas for ice, you don't see the same guys. So it's like roller, you're going out partying with like guys from different teams that you see like two, three times a year. And and it's definitely, I think, a different culture. Not that it's I mean, we kind of developed it into a party culture within our organization. We're always trying to, to get into something. 
I think that's cool though. I mean, I think that's part of the reason why you guys are able to have such a huge pool of guys to pull from is you take the game seriously, but you also take the team and the camaraderie very seriously. Right. Yeah. Cause like I know Gizzy said at the beginning, we have guys that grew up playing together on feet and then you have guys that have been playing their whole life. So you have like that different group, that different background and we all kind of just get together and, we play an hour every week together. We play on five different teams together. We joke around. You got guys, we got guys in their forties playing with us. We have kids that that are still in college playing with us. So it's like such, and then we have, of course, we have a guy 67 years old. I mean, he's the one of, but we have him as well. So it's such a wide range of age, but whenever we play a tournament, you'll have literally everyone coming out, hanging out with each other. And it's like a, like a giant just camaraderie. And it's, it's really, a lot of fun. That's what makes it so rewarding having those types of tournaments is because like you get to see all your boys playing together, whether you're on their team, you're watching them play like this weekend for state wars, we're sending two teams and we're already trying to plan where we're going to go out Friday night after our last game. And we're all going to hang out somewhere and, you know, have a blast. So that's awesome. Well, it's just like, yeah. even, I mean, looking at just all the, the chirps and that's why I started scrolling through the, our private messages and just the shit you guys say about each other is just hysterical. <laughs> um, what was it? I can't find, I was trying to find what you said about Tyler. Uh, like, like we were like, when we used him in uh, Long Island and you were like, fuck him, keep him. He's cut. Yeah. That's usually <laughs> how it goes. Right. Usually if, uh, if Gizzy misses a game, we always tell him, you know, don't come back. Whenever we win the game that he misses, he's missing our championship tonight. If we win that championship, he's going to get a text five minutes later. Thank God Gizzy wasn't in that. Like, it's just like a part of it, you know. Nice. Obviously, you want him there, but we always have to give him shit for missing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, we, we have, God, some people we just don't want in the group chat it gets weird right yeah. and so i mean you always have those guys um but then there's some guys that just one you have you're the guy that doesn't shut up the one that says the weird stuff you have the guy that is too serious then you have uh the guy that's always behind on the group chat right yep. so that's you have me. all these <laughs> you, said the name, you said it and the names popped into my head right away <laughs> yeah yeah the guy answering the you said the game schedule in the chat five times, and he'll text you on the side, hey, what time's our game? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, You always have those guys, but that's what makes it fun. You know, you, you always got to rib them a little bit, give them shit. <laughs> um, all those different guys is what makes the team, too, so, you know. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, I'm not – never mind. I was going to ask who their bill is, Justin, but I, it's just too much. <laughs> Do you have anybody who sends texts to make sure that you guys piss is clear? No, we, we, uh, they don't pee clear. They party too yeah, much. Yeah. We, I mean, that's not even an option for us. You know, <laughs> we, we just kind of let our guys do their own thing. Like I said, in Nashville, we had five guys show up for a game. So if, if that's who shows up, that's who shows up. But at the end of the day, it's all, it's all for fun. So, I mean, listen, you had the one guy in Virginia that showed up hammered from fucking brunch on mimosas yeah right? so yeah that guy's dead to me <laughs> yeah he uh we had a couple guys i'll never forget that they came back at the house at like 3 a.m i was in bed and i wake up and i'm just hearing horrible sounds from outside there's three guys all in a circle just throwing up over the porch <laughs> and i was like we got an 8 a.m game <laughs> and like i'll take it as seriously as i can when like it's a playoff game. Like if it's a playoff game, we all try to have like somewhat of a curfew. If it's like a big game, like for Paiha, I think everyone was like in bed at like 10 p.m. I mean, your brother was in bed at like 6 p.m. He was ready to go. But we uh, we try to have set those types of. But I'll, yeah, he uh, and then he went to brunch the next day and was still slamming mimosas, throwing up everywhere. So that's just the culture, unfortunately. <laughs> that guy's dead to me. He's dead to me. Now, did you ever hear the story about my brother that didn't know there was a time change? No, I'm not. Oh, <laughs> but now I have man. to hear it, of course. Yeah, of course. You know, right, but we'll, I'll say this story and then we'll go to rapid fire, Justin. And so okay. we, Jimmy's first time going to Nashville, right? And we're like, you know, 
we're talking about the time frame like oh you know we just we we gained an hour because the time clocks go back an hour right and he's like what the fuck are you guys talking about we're like dude we're in central time like it's seven o'clock on the east coast it's it's six o'clock here right and he's like no it's not stop fucking with me and we're like no really like <laughs> it, it is an hour back from the east coast he's like dude i'm not stupid i'm not an idiot like you can cut the shit and we're like no <laughs> so he, he looks at his phone and he goes it's six o'clock we're like yes yeah, six o'clock se- like central time he's like oh we google this so he googles it and he's like oh shit you're right <laughs> oh that's a typical oh he's um i don't know if you remember we played in virginia when he was uh oh maybe this was we went to virginia another time in the summer and we had like our semifinal game and we're halfway through the semifinal game we're like where's jimmy at like the game's almost over and then we finally in the middle of the game we see him like rush in run in the locker room there's probably about 10 minutes left in the entire game and he was like oh yeah like i, I just forgot what time the game was at Gets changed in like a minute. Goes out there, scores um, the game-winning goal to go to the finals that that weekend. We're like, dude, that's the that's the one thing that always gets me going is guys being late. Oh yeah, yeah. As someone that runs the team, and and that's probably the only time I've really ever seen Jimmy not ready to go because usually he'll text me five times. Are you sure the game's at this time? I guess probably from that story, is his perception of time has been off ever since. It still texts me a decent amount. Or what's our schedule? When are we playing? So, ever since that one game, though, he's not been late. But guys that are late always drive me crazy when they show up, like, halfway through the game. We had a guy on Tuesday. He showed up in the last eight minutes of our men's league game. And I'm like, dude, why'd you even come? Yeah. 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 Well, that's what gets me, too, right? These guys are like, yo, I'll be there for the second period. It's like, no, don't show up. Yeah. yeah. You're going to ruin, ruin any sort of chemistry we got going. Yeah. So, but Justin, you want to hit him with some rapid fire? You ready for this, Eric? I am. I think so, at least. We'll see. All right. Don't think about it too much. All right. The first one, explain your game. What's, uh, what do you go for out there? Um, it depends on who I'm out there with, but I think the type of player I am has evolved a little bit, especially playing um, higher level tournaments and Paiha. I think I play more of, a grinder game now, but just because I'm so tall, I'm not on grinder, but I play a grinder game. Um, I started using my body a little bit more playing that. <laughs> you got That's it. That's a good one. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, I started playing a little bit more physical because I always get yelled at sometimes by, by your brother um, that I'm the tallest guy out there and I play like the smallest. So I've definitely tried to evolve my game. Cause I mean, I'm six, three, I should be like barreling over guys. And then um, I want to have a little bit of that finesse game. I mean, my shot's horrible. But if I get in close enough to a goalie, I mean, I don't know if Dan remembers in Nashville when your brother gave me the puck right in front of the net. I was so pissed at him. (laughs) So pissed. I still, to this day, I always let him hear about it. I'm like, why would you think I was on your team? I remember uh, Jimmy was down low and I'm in front of the net. And he just looks up, gives me the puck right alone, right in front of the goalie. I just did one deke and tapped it in. I was so pissed, <laughs> so pissed. We had a, we had a, as they like to call it here, our uh, our New Jersey pep talk. Oh yeah, which is where we just my, where Jimmy and I just start yelling at each other. So that's my favorite. But yeah, I'm definitely my type of game is I'm not a finisher at all. I usually try to give the puck to someone that I know is going to finish. Um, I try to pair myself with someone I know is going to finish because I don't have the shot. <laughs> Well, and you know my brother, when he's mad, he's mad, right? So he's just going, just anything that comes to his mind, he's just thrown out there. And he's like, why don't you fucking score? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm not even going to say anything. I had two goals at that point, right? right. And so he gets to the, after the game, afterwards, and we start talking. He's like, I didn't know you had two goals. I'm like, yeah. That's what, that's what I told you, Jim, to get your head out of your ass. <laughs> uh, typical, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, and also crosses off. A different question I had, which was, what are some changes to your game? Um, let's go to something totally different. What do you think is the best pre-game meal? Um, so I'm like, I, if I'm leading up to a game, I won't eat. I get Man. so I had an incident, and it scarred me for life. Where uh, I uh, 
what I have? I might have had like tacos or something before a game. And it was still like a couple hours before the game, so I thought I was going to be mm-hmm. good. But then in true Trash Panda style, I started slamming down um, the iced tea vodkas before the game. <laughs> so I show up to our men's league game. We have like five, six guys on the bench. And about halfway through the game, I just start just yakking for like five minutes straight. It was brutal. So like ever since then, I'm just like scarred to eat. So, mm-hmm. so you don't think it was the vodka? It probably was. But now whenever I, <laughs> I start to feel it coming up when I'm skating, I always think back to that. And I was just hunched over. We had one guy on the ground that took a shot to the leg, and then I'm throwing up. It was a disaster game. Damn. <laughs> uh, I'm the same way, though. I don't like to eat. All right. Uh, why – or you can give me one reason, but what, one reason why roller is better than ice. Um, so my type of style of play is I love – just being able to skate up the rink and maybe pull off like a nice move to get past the guy. I feel like in ice with the offsides, with icing, uh, the pace is a lot different. I love the pace of roller. I like the setting up behind the net, you know, killing the clock. Like I like the strategies that go with that versus ice. It's kind of just, you have to touch up the offsides. I mean, I grew up playing roller. So for me, it's like that type of pace is always so much more fun. I mean, it's, it's the creativity that comes with it, too. I mean, the NHL definitely has, the last couple of years, have developed that creativity. But um, I know Roller, I mean, as far as I was a kid, you have kids, you have guys like Nasher and Pavel Barber that were doing all these crazy moves on Roller. And kind of, that, that's that's kind of like what your inspiration is as a kid on growing your game and like that creativity. So for me, it's always the creativity and, and the pace. Love it. Um what do you think is the proper amount of physicality that should be allowed in roller? Um, I think anything along the boards is that, that type of physicality along the boards. I think open ice hits, I think it's a little hairy because it's always a little bit harder, I think, to stop on roller than ice. So you've got to expect guys to try to maneuver around open ice hits. But um, I know for Paiha, they usually allow you to play a little bit of the body along the boards. Um, I know especially for, like, the finals games, they were really just letting us play. As long as anything wasn't too blatant, it would just be regular boards plays. You could throw guys into the boards. It doesn't have to be anything dirty, anything malicious, but just trying to rub guys out and wear them down for the rest of the game is, is I think that's the appropriate amount of physicality. Cool. Um, what do you think the best sports film or show ever is? Um, I guess, I mean, the, the cliche answer, of course, is Miracle, but um, I'm a big Goon movie guy. The Goon movie was always fun to watch um, yeah. because you always have a couple guys on your team that think they're from that movie and think they could fight <laughs> like Doug Latt. So it's always fun to watch those guys try to try to reenact Doug the Thug. Well, I also feel like the Pandas is like your typical, like, Choose 69. Yep. You know, I, I, I that's that's what I, that's what I picture, you know, some of the guys on the on the pandas, right? So yeah, we got a couple of those guys that they want their jersey number 69. I try to stay away from that because you don't want to be a total douche out there. I mean, we're already bad <laughs> enough, especially if we show up with chrome purple buckets. But oh. um but yeah. <laughs> um do you think that still mat is definitely like totally superior to normal tile? Um, I would have said no probably before Paiha, but after playing so much on still mat, uh, we played it in Nashville, and that was the first time I experienced still mat tile because um, up north there's really only like just regular tile at like Skate Safe, um, Highline, Inman, all those different ranks, but um, still mat. I think has a little bit better of a grip. I think the puck slides so much better on still mat. So I would say after playing on pretty much, I think 75% of the rinks we played on for Paiha, especially for the finals and playoffs, um, we're all still mat. And I think that we were able to kind of change our game to, to that type of style because the puck flies on that still mat. And that was something that I know we always had to tell Gizzy because I mean, he never played on still mat. I never played on still mat up until like a year ago. So like that puck will 
will fly five hole. Like if they keep it on the ground, it's it's flying. So it's definitely mm-hmm. a different style, but um, I love it myself. I mean, that's why I'm kind of happy that Highline's trans uh, transferring to to that type of tile for at least the future. Very cool. Um, do you have a go to chirp? I don't. It's just whatever pops into my head. It's usually something stupid. I mean, when I was in college, my go-to chirp was whenever some guy's playing the body on you, I would say to him, you want to kiss or come kiss me? Like, just like nonsense like that. Because you get guys that are like in their, their 40s and 50s and they're like, what the hell is this this kid saying to me? Like, yeah. like some 18, 19-year-old kid asking to kiss me and like they get all like, <laughs> oh, why are you saying that, you little shit? So that always got them under their skin. But now it's just really... Uh, just stupid things like we we as a team always just have like the dumbest things will come out of our mouth um we got guys saying oh they got bananas for wheels like just stupid <laughs> stuff like the, we always say uh go kiss them whenever some of the other team has the puck and we're chasing after them you got john on defense saying go give them a kiss go give them a kiss which just means to go try to four check them but the other teams are just like what the hell are these kids saying go kiss them so it always gets under a couple team skins. That's always probably been the most consistent one over the over the years. It's always some sort of kissing joke or touching them or just something weird. <laughs> just to really make them come to the bench and say to their team, what the fuck did that kid say to me? Yeah, play a little mental game. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Um, what do you think the most important thing is to keeping team morale up, kind of getting everybody rallied? Um, I think it's just being able to joke like once a day, there's a, there's a stupid inside joke going off in the group chat or we're all bagging on a different person every single day. We try to, we try to run with it. Whoever says something stupid first that day just gets bagged on the rest of the day. And, and no one knows who it's going to be the next day, but you're, you know, you got all the guys excited to get going on that. And then, um, of course, the party and going out like that was the huge reason a lot of our guys wanted to play Pi Hots that to have that travel experience and be able to to kind of go a little bit further than just playing at like our usual home rinks. So being able to go party and, you know, you get guys that maybe you weren't as close with, but you start, you know, rooming with them at hotels and hanging out with them. They become close friends. And then, you know, it's it's a whole experience with them, as Dan knows from his brief stint with us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because that transfers over. That chemistry transfers over to the rink. Oh, 100%. I mean, we'll have guys where we just bag on, and then at the end of the day, though, they get into some shit. You know, we got guys that will flatten them out, get in fights in men's league over these guys. Like At the end of the day, we're all such good friends with each other. I mean, we see these guys now four or five times a week. We're traveling with them once a month. So you, you kind of become – you're forced to become close friends with them, unfortunately, and being friends with Jimmy, you know – I mean, maybe he's dropped next year and I could finally cut that friendship, but we'll see. <laughs> oh, you're stuck with him, man. I he's know. like he's like a damn uh, wart and you're just not getting rid of it. It's so deep in your skin <clears throat> that it, wart remover doesn't work. I will say, though, I do bag on him a lot, but I always will respect him for that one weekend where it was our first tournament ever and he knew what he was getting into. And he probably hated playing that weekend. But you know what? <laughs> the next weekend's come around. And he says, yo, can I play with you guys? Oh, I want to play. But I always respect him for that because we were not by any means a good team. And we hung around with some really good teams. Well, and at that time, he was kind of getting back into the game. Too. Right. So, uh, you know, he turned his life around and kind of was like, I was like, have him come out and play with us. And he was out of shape. And now you look at him now and – he freaking flies. Yeah. Yeah. I always have a soft spot for him for that just because he was a hundred percent the best player on that team. And we had no business hanging in that weekend, but having him and Gizzy kind of put the whole team on his back. Like I always respect him for that because, you know, a lot of guys after that weekend, they might just be like, Oh, I don't want to play with these guys. Like they stink. But for him to come back and then he was playing Paiha with us, he plays pretty much any time. Um, like a club team needs a team, like a, a player last minute, you know, guys always drop last minute. Uh, I know Jimmy's like, all right, I'll play on two teams. I'll do this. I'll do that. Like he's always one of those guys where he'll, he'll just play, you know, you'll, you'll yeah. never, you always can count on him to play in a tournament, to play in a game. 
Um, there's not too many times where you're like, where's Jimmy besides that one playoff game? <laughs> but he really is like one of the most reliable guys. So he, he's probably played in just about every tournament with us. You, you know, you get rid of him, right? You don't give him the pants. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm holding out for. <laughs> he's going to keep coming back for those pants and they're just going to keep going missing. As soon as you get rid of him, that's when he'll end up with pants somehow. Yeah. Right. He'll play against us and he'll have those pants, those panda pants. Mm-hmm. Well, man, one more question. Are you ready? Sure. All right. Do you have fun? I do. Do I, did I have fun today? Yeah. Oh, this was awesome. <laughs> this yeah, was, we really appreciate really... you being on here, man. Yeah. yeah, I, I We love what you, you do with your talk. organization. Yeah, definitely. I mean, having guys like you that repost us and support us is always a plus. I mean, you guys help us grow as much as anyone else. So I always appreciate that. I mean, we post our nonsense, but we also post like our serious rosters, our stats, our highlights. We, we try to keep it, you know, professional for like that aspect, but we do like to have fun. We always respect um, pages like you guys that are always showing us support, no matter how stupid some of it is. <laughs> you know, we end up on some of these pages. Uh, like I know for uh, when we were in Colorado, we all took a stupid picture of us I'm sure your brother knows about the bathtub or the hot tub picture, Dan. Yeah, I, I was, I've been told about it, yeah. Yeah, so we, uh, we, right when we got to Colorado, the first thing we did was 10 of us hopped in a hot tub together. And we took a picture, and we just posted it as, like, a joke. And the next thing we know, it's on, like, the Pi Hop page. <laughs> yeah. They, they're, like, reposting it. And we're like, ah, oh, shit, teams are going to think we're such, like, freaks. <laughs> yeah. Good. I mean, they might be afraid were, to go 100%. in the corners. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but it's that type of stuff that, that keeps keeps the team together. And, you know, that's what it's about. So much fun doing stuff like this and just growing the game as a whole. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, you guys, you made our, you know, we one, you know, the, the one thing was can't have my brother on. So, <laughs> and you abided by that. So we thank you very much for that. Uh, maybe one day, maybe. We'll see. I was secretly hoping that you'd take the green screen down and he was just sitting behind you. (laughs) I was praying for it. Yeah, right. He goes to bed too early. That, and he can't shut the hell up either. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I've asked him to play 7 p.m. games to fill in for men's league, and he's already like, ah, I'm I'm in bed. So. (laughs) (laughs) Unless it's like 5 p.m. game, he won't show up. Yeah, he's he's old. But. Well, I'll be there. Uh, yeah yeah now we appreciate you coming on we appreciate you talking champion trash pandas we congratulate you yet again on winning oh yeah uh minor right and so for all of our viewers out there if you haven't done so already click the subscribe button leave a comment in the chat uh you're always free to leave comments while we're live uh make sure to follow us on spotify so you can get the updated version when we release it uh, and if you're if you're four checking roller hockey, don't let up because there's no offsides. I'm Dan Dean. I'm Justin Wood. Eric, thanks for joining us, man. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah, thank you. Have a great night. Yep. You too. Peace, everybody. Every episode of No Offsides Podcast is brought to you by Champion Hockey. Be a champion.